Welcome to the Radiate Wellness Podcast. I'm your host, Christy Clemens Hoffman. Each week we will discuss tools, tips, and ways to radiate your best life ever, interviewing practitioners, authors, and luminaries to help you on your path. Wellness, joy, peace, abundance. What do you want to radiate? Hello and welcome to this episode of Radiate Wellness. Today we radiate oneness with Susan Plunkett, the author of The Wanderers on Earth, which is book two from the Mission of v- Mission from Venus trilogy. So this is a bit of a departure for this podcast to talk about a fiction book, but it's not really fiction though, not entirely. Welcome, Susan, welcome. I'm so looking forward to chatting with you today. Hello, me too. And you're so right. It's not really fiction because it's channeled and they told, put it in story form because it would be easier for more people to consider the ideas. So that's why it's a story. I love it. But it's actually channeled information. Now, who do you channel this information from? Do you know? I don't know. <laughs> there are beings from the formless realm, and sometimes there's more than one voice. And one of your previous guests, Cindy Dale, told me once that she could actually see some of them and that she saw them as very blue light beings and she said the the task would be to sort through the voices and not let too many people too many people too many beings they may never have been people because there are many kinds of beings who are never people who communicate with us um not let them overwhelm your message but i don't see them i get a lot of downloads in the night when i'm dreaming and then I, when I'm writing, I always write in the morning because this shaman that I work with, who is a daughter of an Australian Aborigine, told me to write in the morning because before the day clouds in, because I'm getting messages in the night. So I feel stuff kind of drop in through my receiver, my brain, which is my receiver. And I know that it didn't get generated in my brain. And then I write it and then I rewrite it to make it more of a story to connect up the information. Oh my goodness. Did it seem a bit overwhelmed? I'm sorry? I feel so lucky, but I'm just a scribe. Right, right. Did it feel overwhelming at all when you first started getting these messages and these downloads? Well, in the beginning, I blocked them. In, in 2010, uh, a wonderful intuitive who's now crossed over told me, you're really a channel and it's taking a lot of your energy to block this. But I was afraid. I didn't want to let anything through. When I knew stuff, I, the one exception was because I'm also a clinical psychologist, a Jungian psychologist, in my office with clients, even as a young psychologist in my 30s, if something would drop in, I would accept it as information for that person. Um, but outside of my office, I never used it. And in 2010, when this intuitive said, you really should use it, I, I couldn't because I, I thought, what if the dark side comes in? What if Darth Vader comes in? I, I can't, like, ah. So, but then in 2014, when Cindy Dale, who you know and have interviewed beautifully as a sister, soul sister, um, told me, look, you're supposed to write. You're supposed to be a scribe to take this information. You've been many, in many lifetimes, you've been a scribe. And they really want you to do this. Your gods and my gods. So after resisting, I started to do it. Nice. And I'm now writing book three of the trilogy. Um, but it, I stumbled with it when COVID started because I was, my brain was trying to compute 
what was happening on earth and why it was happening. Like, what is happening? One bug to unite us all? I mean, how is this, you know, we're all, everybody's getting it everywhere. We're like not six degrees of separation. We're all equal. Um, so I was trying to compute what was happening. And of course, because I live in New York City, in, in March and April, I was frightened. Of, like, are we all going to die? Because um, we had these big refrigerator trucks with 50 bodies per truck. But then um, everybody started accepting it and working together. And so, you know, then I was able to start writing again after I, my channel probably just got blocked from fear. Because when I'm afraid, I don't receive anything. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. I forgot what you asked me because I was blah, blah, blah. Susan, seriously, it's all it's all good because as you said, we're all connected and we're all one anyway. So all questions are really part of the bigger question. Yep. Um, if you would like a little bit of confirmation, you've got a council working with you, a council that looks like maybe five or seven uh, beings and they speak with one voice as well as Saint Germain in there as uh, too. Um, you're so I don't know how oh you're intuitive too oh yes because I've been told actually about the council from the formless realm the Aust I work with an Australian shaman the daughter of an Australian Aborigine and that's what she said there's a council you've known them many many lifetimes long long ago and they're um they're coming through That's, i'm so delighted that you confirm that because you know you think sometimes am i going crazy you know <laughs> but then i just go back to work and it's okay and i feel grounded when i'm writing Wonderful. Well, and that's just the, that's just it, you know. Um, yes, there's all of these things at play and they, they are quick to say that, to remember that you're one of them. You're part of this council too. You just happen to be, this is your mission Hard. this time, right? But so yeah. many times we get so lost in who's talking with us and how special that is and how wonderful it is. We forget that we need to be focused here. <sighs> Yeah. Right. So, on in this body. Yeah. In this body. And so I, I feel like this, this mission that you're on to write these books is helpful for so many. And um, so let's go back to the books. So how much of these books are actually channeled or downloaded? What's your process for putting this information together? Um, it's all the, facts are downloaded but the story i've woven around it for example on the book book one mission from venus starts in venus and i've received channeled information from the masters of light that i believe to be true information and they're teaching the wanderers the wanderers i have made up eight characters i mean i assume i've made them up because I'm never sure, but I think that I'm making them up. And there are four pairs of twin planes, two from the violet planet, two from the Pleiades, two from inside Arcturus, the star Arcturus, and two from Venus. And they, are, they have answered the call. When the call went out across the universe, Earth's in need of love today. We want volunteers, but the problem, not the problem, the challenge is that to help on earth, to live there, you have to incarnate as human because there are laws governing earth and who can come to earth. And so you're gonna have to give up all your fifth dimensional powers and incarnate as human infants and then wake up and remember who you are, that you are wanderers from a higher dimension uh, they're on a mission. So that part, I don't, the idea of wanderers came through, but the four, the eight names that I gave them, well, with the exception of one, Sonam, that name, uh, I believe is my 
name because I did a life between life regression uh, after my younger sister died at a young age, young, not young, but you know, too young, uh, because I, I was not complete with her and I wanted to speak to her. So I did a life between life regression and the life between life regression psychologist asked me my name when I was in that dimension. And I was like, my name, my name. It was hard to talk because you communicate telepathically there. And he was bothering me by asking me stuff. But I did, and I was weeping the whole time, but I did manage to say to him when he said, what do you look like? And I, I, I didn't know. He said, look down. And I, I, I just saw a blue oval of light. And what's your name? And I said, Sonom. And I never heard that word before. So I, one of the characters is Sonom. And that was given to me during that experience. The other name is I, I think I made up, but maybe they told me in a dream or I, I don't know what's made up and what's not. Right. You know? And they're beautiful names. Yeah. Um, they're, they're classic names. So Sonom. Do you feel that character is a representation of you? Yeah, I feel she's she's extremely extroverted. I mean, now that I'm older, I'm more introverted and and really appreciating the balance because as we move through life, according to Young, extroverts become more introverted, introverts become more just in the service of becoming whole. That's a great, one of the great marriages to transform, to balance conscious and unconscious, to balance masculine and feminine, to balance introversion and extroversion. But I do think that Sonam, so when I'm writing Sonam, for example, her interaction, she has a cat named Mona and I have two cats mm -hmm. and or we have two cats. And she also has a lab, and I have a lab, uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, her lab is named Shiva. Uh, so I put things to make the story move, which I don't believe were channeled, which I believe I live. And she lives in, they, when they come to Earth, they live in Greenwich Village, and that's where I live. Um, but the other characters are not me. <laughs> and I try not to let her hog everything um, in the books. <laughs> um, so yeah, the, the other names, I, I'm not sure where they came from. Oh, um, lovely. Or what the violet planet is. I never heard of the violet planet. I don't know what the violet planet is. That's just, okay, two from the violet planet. I don't know where that is or if it exists. It's not in our solar system, but then, you know. Somewhere. Would you like to hear something interesting? So, oh, yeah. do, you, do you know the work of Dolores Cannon? No. Oh, my goodness. Well, Dolores she was, Cannon. Dolores Cannon, she was a hypnotherapist who did past life regression and much more. I do her work. And she had written many books based on her work, one of which was the, uh, the Three Waves of Volunteers, which is so much of your book. Um, the, the call up for volunteers, the, the need, Dolores Cannon, yes. Um, <laughs> I know we're in the middle of an interview now, but I'll send you some information about her when we're finished. <laughs> Her so experience. what's interesting is that I do her work. I do this past life regression and then some, but I've had clients who've gone to the violet planet. Really? So it's a real place. Yeah. It's a real place. Yeah. And it's a higher consciousness, a much higher yeah. consciousness. Yeah. I, 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 Sonom is from the violet planet. Oh my goodness. Sonom and Ativio are from the violent planet and mm -hmm. they're fifth dimensional beings who incarnated here. Isn't that oh, so it is a real place. It is a real place. Yeah. Isn't that astounding? Yeah. 
Um, so these wanderers, they responded to a call. What is that about? Why is the call um, out across the universe? Part of the information that I received that I didn't come from me because I had no idea of it is that this is an auspicious time on Earth. I think we all know that mm-hmm. because we're ending a 75,000 year cycle. And that's an opportunity for humans to go to the fourth, to make the leap to the fourth dimensional consciousness, which is the consciousness of love for all beings as one. That's what we have to learn in the third dimension. But the Council of Nine, operating in Saturn's rings, had the feeling that not enough humans were going to make the jump with Earth Mm. into the fourth dimension. And and they would have to spend another 75,000 years learning the lessons of the third dimension on a different planet that's still third dimensional. Mm. So they wanted beings to incarnate to help humans wake up to the truth of their divinity, that they are, that we are all divine and we are all connected. We are all one. And the more humans that could wake up, the more could enter the fourth dimension along with our planet. So they needed volunteers and higher dimensional beings from across the galaxies volunteered to train on Venus, Venus in the sixth dimension not the third dimension as we perceive it, you know, with a sulfuric acid atmosphere, but Venus in the sixth dimension, which is habitable and beautiful. But of course, these are light beings and they can live anywhere, I guess. Mm -hmm. Uh, So they go there to train. And that's where the masters of light, Lord Lanto, St. Germain, um, all of them, there's seven different ones, each with a different ray, Master Hilarion, Mm -hmm. um, they each spend, and then also uh, Adama from Telos in Mount Shasta comes to Venus to work with them. Um, and they train. And the first book is about their training and their practice visits to Earth, where they're allowed to go through the quarantine to see Earth. And they come to New York City to Washington Square Park. Um, and they are disguised as humans for a visit, a practice visit, um, which is part of their training. And then there are various things that happen around New York City in the day that they're here. Then they go back to Venus and complete their training. In the end of the first book, they are, they have to separate from their twin flames. They are incarnate, they are born on earth. And the last part of that book is their separate births. One is born in Moscow, one is born in Cairo, one is born in Dublin. One is born, uh, you think I'd know. <laughs> anyway, eight's in New York. Um, New York, London, Moscow, Cairo, Mumbai. They're born all over the world. And they don't, and they don't know that they're higher, from a higher dimension. But they know they're weird as they grow up. They start to understand they're a little bit weird. And then book two opens their 21. Oh, in the meantime... They've had to survive an attack by the Dark Lords of Orion who don't want them to live because they don't want people to ascend on the path of light. They would like more people to be enslaved by them to travel on the dark path, which serves the creator in its own way also. But So there's that battle for the dark path is about power and the path of light is about love and connection. So they have to survive the Dark Lords. They will, in all three books, have to battle the Dark Lords. So. This just feels so, so much like my life, Susan. <laughs> You're probably a wanderer. I'm definitely a wanderer. Um, so the, the people, the wanderers in your book they make these realizations, they, they fight what they need to fight, they come into their own awakening. How uncomfortable is it for them? How, how do they manage that? Because I have a lot of people coming to me saying, I'm going through this awakening process, I feel like I'm losing my mind. Right. There, it's very confusing 
at first. And, but as they start to reunite with the, finally in, in book two, the eight friends who were training on Venus together, they find each other. And once they find each other, they have their group, their soul group, and they reunite with their twin friends. So they have support. And I think for the people that come to you, it's about support. You know, it's about a practice, their own meditation practice, their work with you, um, and then finding other like-minded people who are awakening. Because many of you are awakening. Many of us are awakening. And what are we awakening to? The reality that we're divine, that we're each a spark of light, and all of our sparks make God. And that's what that's all we have to know to go to the fourth dimension. Okay. Everybody knows that. Boom, you're there. Wow. This is so much my worldview and my cosmological view, I suppose you could say. Oh my gosh. Um, so moving into the fourth dimension, what does that look like? How are how how are things different? It's the consciousness of love. Life becomes easier because I don't know if this is true because I don't know if any of it's true or a big metaphor, but to move to the fourth dimension, one has to hold enough violet light. And the more violet light you hold, which is, which is the light of divine love, then the more consciousness you have that we are all equal, black, white, red, young, old, rich, poor, um, because we're all made of divinity and star stuff. We're all born from the heart of a dying red star. And our borrowed atoms are just that. We're just these borrowed groups of atoms put together, but we're all participating in this cosmic consciousness. We're all downloading consciousness from the same source, the divine. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is not even so different from what Carl Jung said. In the old days, people talked about the unconscious or the collective unconscious as God. They just called it what it was, God. And we're all downloading from source. But a lot of us think it's coming from our own brain, I mean, it's not coming from our own brain. It's coming from source. That's why if everything is coming from source, it's hard for me to know what I'm channeling and what I'm making up. Because even what I'm making up is still coming from source. You know, the fact that I give Sonam a dog and two cats. I give her one cat. I have two, but I only give her Mona. <laughs> You have to draw the line somewhere, Susan. <laughs> but I love this. And even in hypnosis, a client can have a magical transforma transformative session and come out of it and say, it feels like I made that all up. Um, well, first of all, I would say, well, do you feel like you could really make something like that up? But second of all, um, I really know and trust that the right side of our brain, which is the side that is connected to that consciousness, that greater consciousness, is also the side of our brain, the hemisphere that is responsible for imagination anyway. Yeah. And um, when I'm working with others to try to awaken their spiritual gifts, their psychic gifts, their intuitive gifts, you know, I always let them know, you know, there's always the, the thought, am I making this up? And my response is, if it's true, if it's helpful, if it's kind, if it's enlightening, does it matter? Yeah. And anyway, it's all coming from, it doesn't matter because it's all coming from source. Yes. Because there is, no, scientists now tell us, physicists now tell us, even neurosurgeons like uh, Eben Alexander, who had the near-death experience, they oh. tell us that the brain doesn't store anything. It's just a receiver. Consciousness is out there. So everything we're getting is, we're, we're pulling it in. Your own, everything is come, being pulled in by the receiver. It's the cloud. <laughs> it is, it is. It's, it, the computer cloud is a metaphor for our cloud, which is God, which is the collective unconscious. Oh my God. So, 
So, yeah, that's another thing you can say to your clients. Like, hey, it's all coming from source. It's all coming from source. Yeah. That's what I say to myself when I get doubtful. Like, mm-hmm. you know, that's why, you know, because if I really trusted, it probably wouldn't be a story or a trilogy. It would just be the facts. But because I'm like, just I just need to say it as a story because I give a they told me to say it as a story, mm-hmm. whether it's the council told me or my person, whoever. But it's amazing that you mentioned this council because Carrie Henwood, this Australian shaman, daughter of an this is exactly what she said. They're in the formless realm. They sit in council. You have sat in council with them before. You are here to be a scribe. You're a scribe. And that's what I think. I'm a scribe. Absolutely. Um, I get the impression that you're like the away team as well. (laughs) Yeah, here I am, like down here in the third dimension. (laughs) The one who gets to swim in this energy, swim in this stuff and report back in a way. I love it. So, um, so you are obviously one of these wanderers, one of these volunteers. I know I am as well, but what are the risks for these higher dimensional beings? These ones big who risks. Give us, yeah, big risks, right? Yeah. Um, they, so, so what do they risk in, in sending us here or coming down to supervise or coming down to, to see how it's going? What are the risks? Make us up. To wake us up, what they risk is getting trapped in the third dimension for hundreds of thousands of years, minimum another 75,000 years, because if you don't wake up, you just keep reincarnating in the third dimension. Mm. That's one risk. Mm. A bigger risk is that you get pulled onto the path of the dark side. The dark side is very seductive. Mm. The dark side... uh, the, the light is uh, you get you advance on the path of light by service to others. The dark side you advance by taking power over others, and you can people can be seduced into power. Money is power. Raw power is power. Greed is power. Selfishness is power. So the dark lords they advance by enslaving people. I mean, ultimately the most power you can take over a human aside from dragging them onto the dark path and corrupting their value system uh, would be to take their life, to kill them. That's the ultimate power over the physical body. Still, the soul could be free. But if you're drawn onto the dark path and you invest in the dark path, then your values become, it's only what's good for me. It's the best stuff for me. Um, It's how do I get ahead? I don't care. I'll get mine. I'll get ahead. I'll enslave others. It's just service to self. It's a divergent path, service to others and all beings or service to self. And say a fifth dimensional light being incarnates here. And this is the risk that my characters are taking. And they get seduced by the dark side who will try endlessly to seduce them and dragged onto the dark path then they could be stuck on the dark path for 75,000 years, 200,000 years, six, a million years. Mm -hmm. So it's a risk because once they're on the path of light in the higher dimension, they're on that path. Mm -hmm. But if you come back to the third dimension where you're still deciding what's your path, because there are two groups of people loosely on earth right now, those in service to others, the helping professions and grocery store where those in service to others and then those in service only to self i want mine i want power i i want my money and you know and to heck with everybody else to and heck with everybody else. yeah right uh, that i'm not so worried to come back to the third dimension because mm. you might not wake up you might get enslaved by the dark side oh my goodness it not seems there's good. so much of that that service only to self side in the world right now. Yeah, but I think that that will shift because that the, the guy that told me that I was a channel, the, the man 
who is now deceased, he told me at that same time in 2010, said in two to 400 years, will be paradise on this planet, paradise on earth. Of course, it will be fully fourth dimensional. Mm -hmm. So yes, it will be paradise. And those people who cannot achieve fourth dimensional consciousness, cannot hold enough violet light, they will have to incarnate after they die on another planet that's still third dimensional. And they will have to go through all the struggles of the third dimension until they learn. It's, you can have as many chances as you want. You're not given three chances and done, no. Take as long as you want, but there's prolong the pain because the third dimension is painful. It's very painful. Um, so it's good to wake up. It's good to wake up. Absolutely. Um, so how do, your, how do your characters in your trilogy wake up? Um, they start having experiences or doing things because each of my characters, I gave them slight, they all can, they're all telepathic, of course. They all can transform into their light bodies. They all can um, apparate from place to place when they're awake, but they each have a unique power also. So even when they're children, they start to accidentally use their powers. And then they're told by a mother or a father or something, hey, don't do that when anybody else is around. For example, the, the little boy in Mumbai, his dad dies before he's born and his mom has a garden and he knows how much she loves it. So he doubles all the plants in her garden because he's capable of doubling and multiplying like the fishes in the loves. So she says, oh my God, don't let anybody know you do this. It could be dangerous for you. Another one is able to transform things. And he's at the seaside uh, on the Caspian Sea. And he's communing with a fish as he's swimming. And the fit, he picks up that the fish wishes it could fly. It keeps leaping. And so he turns it into a bird. And his mother sees him do this. And she's like, and he said, but, but the fish told me he wanted to be, he wanted to fly. So they, they do things. Like Sonam can touch something. And she knows the whole history of it. Who made it, who, psychometry, who, who owned it everything and she goes into a museum with her father her mother's abandoned them and she touches a clock a, a deco clock and she <clears throat> she tells him everything about it and he's like and the guard comes over don't touch the stuff you know but so they start to know and at first they think everyone can do what they do because they're children oh they thought everyone could do this but their parents kind of like and so they start to know that. And then, of course, they come under attack by Darpith and Veldemeron, uh, Dark Lords. And, and they all are nearly killed at several points in their childhood. So then even their parents are like, oh, boy, this isn't like our other kids. <laughs> Right. This isn't like our other kids and we've got to protect these kids. And yeah. um, I work with many of these kids. Parents come to me and let me know that their kids are doing maybe not quite the same thing as the, the characters in your books, but um, seeing spirits or feeling yeah. energy or transmitting energy and really worried about it. And, um, you know, if these kids are allowed to um, normalize in a way, right? This is not a strange thing. This is not harmful. This is not bad. It's normal. Then they can continue in, in that way and grow their gifts. But if they're told this is bad, you have to hide it. It's not real. It's dangerous, et cetera. They can terrible. shut it down. Yeah, what, I'm sorry, what was that? What? So, yes. What was that? Yeah. Oh, it's terrible if the parents do that. They have to be told that this is gifts. We don't brag about it but we hold it as very precious to us and we don't, we aren't afraid of it. And as more and more 
people who are born with higher consciousness mm -hmm. and more and more of us who are here already wake up, we will become more accepted. A lot of people at a book reading I had for the first book came up to me afterwards and said, oh, I channeled, I didn't realize that was what I was doing, or I see this, or I do that. And, you know, they're willing when it's normalized to share and admit that they have those powers too, and that they were denying them or not recognizing them. But that will be more and more the norm until we're all communicating telepathically, yes. and which we will all be doing. And, you know, the texting is almost like a first step. You know, the way we communicate across space and time with our various devices prepares us for our own ability to do it. We will put down the device at a certain point and we want, we want to contact a friend, we will just send them a message and they will get it. And that already happens. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it happens all the time. Yeah. You know, in way back when, um, I taught Sunday school in person, and I would see the kids come in before class, and they would build things with blocks during free play. And they would build things together without even talking. And yes. the whole thing would have a story. It would be a whole structure that they built without even communicating. Because they're communicating telepathically or sensitively. Mm -hmm. With their and energy, I mean, when Jesus of Nazareth walked on earth, he said, You will do this too. Everything that I do, you will do. <clears throat> you will heal the sick, you will help the dead rise, you will help the blind see. Mm -hmm. You know, and Cindy Dale, for example, can do some of that healing with people. But you know, I believe Jesus was, was a wanderer. You know, he was definitely coming from a higher dimension and he was talking about fourth dimensional consciousness, preparing us, trying to prepare us that we are God. He was saying, you too are divine. I am not the only God. I am God. Yes, I am God, but you are God. But people couldn't hear that. It just seems it. so beyond belief, beyond capability. Yeah. Right. And then you have the church telling you, no, that in the early days, the only way is you come to church, you pay your tithes, you pay yeah. your indulgences. That's, exactly That's taking control mm -hmm. because, you know, it's full of light. And then the dark side gets involved <laughs> with power and hierarchy because the dark side works that way. They take a truth like God is love. And then they start with their power structures and hierarchies and tithes and control because they knew in the early days that there was in reincarnation. They knew that and they shut it out of the writings to control us, you know, because then the, that's how the dark side gets in to corrupt the light. But it's all right because everybody wakes up in the end and the, the joy and the godhood of all beings is assured in the long run. Mm. we're all going home back to source and that's why we're so lonely because we're really lonely for source mm. so how can we in your opinion how can we connect with source in this lifetime yeah um service to others mm -hmm. meditation mm -hmm. prayer um self-love which is important form of love, self-care, caring for our temple. But I think primarily service to others, the service you do for another, mm -hmm. however, whatever form uh, it takes. Yeah, yeah. Whatever, whatever form that takes, mm -hmm. absolutely. And it can be self, I mean, service to others can be, you always have change in your pocket that you can give to a homeless person. It can be... Yeah that you devote one day a week or one day a month to yeah. walking dogs at the shelter. Yeah, or your career, or seeing clients, seeing parents whose children are nervous that the children are psychic or that the children have, this, have sight and reassuring them and easing their fear because there's fear and there's love. And anyone who like eases fear um, is in service to others. Mm. Did you know that Radiate Wellness has a subscription-based premium content Facebook group? 
Think of it like the premium version of this free podcast. In this premium Facebook group, you can find great content like replays of online classes, meditations on angels, chakras, mindfulness, and more, guest speakers, mini classes, polls, plus you'll be the first to know of guests that we have scheduled for the podcast and can submit questions for them. You get all of this great content for one low monthly price, and the first month is half off. You can subscribe by going to radiatewellnesscommunity.com slash shop. Click the subscriptions button and you're in. Also, while I have your attention, wherever you're listening to this free podcast, if you could just do us a couple of favors, please. One is go to hit the subscribe or follow button. Then you'll be notified of all of the episodes we have coming out each week. Also, please rate and review. It sounds really simple, but it helps us to grow our audience when people are looking for great podcasts. And when we grow our audience, we can do bigger and better things and bring you even more great guests. So please do those couple of things, and that will help us grow this audience and this podcast. Thank you so much for listening. I love so that definition. Right to do it. And, and we can be paid for our service because God doesn't want us not to survive. Mm-hmm. You know, Source wants us all to thrive. And there's enough. There's no limit. There's more than enough for everyone. If the dark side <clears throat> would be hoarding, <laughs> you know, hoarding money and power and, you know, Mm -hmm. hedge funds and whatever they're doing or even just giving putting up the mindset that if these people have rights then you have fewer rights and that's not yeah it's not a pie it's not a pie that if you take a bigger piece no it's not a pie it's Mm -mm. an endless cloud an endless mountain of resources because we manifest what According to the energy we put out, whatever vibration we're putting out, we can manifest. I think that's the law of one, and I forget who wrote about that, but I believe that that's true. That's one of the ways we create is by you set your dial, your vibration to like love. And if you're radiating oneness as our theme today, um, then you're going to get that. Oh, your cat is so beautiful. (laughs) If, if you're listening to the podcast as opposed to YouTube, you're missing out. <laughs> There's a beautiful cat coming in and out. She is very pretty. And that's what, you know, the, our whole um, our whole culture right now, um, I was going to be, our whole culture right now is, is virtual, it's Zoom, et cetera, et cetera. Here in New York, I'm in Kansas City. I was going to head up to the office today, but it, it was kind of icy today and I didn't want to make the drive. Yeah. So, you know, I think these days we just kind of forgive that stuff. And, and we love it. It's We love it. I saw your dog. Come oh, yeah. Out. He walked there and now my cat, one of my cats is rubbing on him. <laughs> they're They're like... I don't know. Can you see that? Oh, them? look at, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Oh, what sweet baby. Oh my goodness. Your cat there looks like my KC. Yeah, that's Scout. And he was around somewhere. No, I think people like to see the human side of us, yeah. you know, um, and our lives. And also, Uh, At the beginning of Zoom, you know, when we started having to work on Zoom because we didn't want to pass the virus around, another intuitive, uh, a former nun who's now just works as an intuitive, told me when I said, like, I feel like when I sit with people, there's heart to heart healing in my office. So how is this going to be? And she said, better. She said, because you when you tr- when you are on Zoom with a person, you get into their home or their space as well, and the energy changes there. Because when you just work with someone in your office, they start to vibrate at a different frequency, and they try to hold that frequency, but then they go home and they go back into the atmosphere where they were, 
and they lose their their higher frequency. But when people work with one another from your house to my house, then the frequency stays in the house of the client. And I hadn't thought of it. She said, it's all subtle energy anyway. It's all subtle energy. So let it get in the house and let their house energy get mixed with you to, for the whole energy to receive subtle energy. So, I love stop how she put that. it. Yeah, she put it in a really nice way. And she was a former nun who just felt that the church was too hierarchical and, and wasn't accommodating her gifts as an intuitive and a psychic. So... Wow. I think that's so true. And, um, you know, even doing distance healing, distance Reiki, distance uh, medical yes. intuition, it's just as effective, even more so. But I love the aspect of, like, infusing the home with, with yeah. the clearing as well. If you're giving Reiki through your subtle energy, you are getting it in their home, too. And Reiki subtle energy anyway. Um, a lot of us don't touch when we're giving Reiki to people anyway, even if the person was before you, in front of you, mm -hmm. stretched out on a table. Like, I guess some Reiki practitioners touch, but others just let the energy come through the palms, not even touching the body. Mm -hmm. So if it can go that far, it can go Why not? further. Why not? Yeah, it can. The answer is it can. It can. I love that. So um, let's turn it back to your book. Um, let's turn it back to your book. And hold it up so you can see it. Yeah, let's do. Okay. Thank you for that opportunity. That's the volume two. Absolutely, volume two. And I see it on your shelf as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I keep it out there to remind myself. To because, show it. Because Gavin told me after I did a couple interviews, you never showed the book. Did you even mention the title? I said, no, we got talking. We got talking. This is Gavin Davis, who is who yeah. was on the episode on uh, the podcast as well. He is a lovely human. Fine. And an excellent, um, an excellent marketer and you know, kind of promoter. He's the head of marketing for John Hunt Publishing, my publishing company. He's and lovely. he's just a stellar human being, a Welshman. He's got the cutest accent. Doesn't he's he? Just adorable. Yeah. And he said, you've got to go on. She's such a wonderful interviewer. You've got to go on. So oh, that makes me feel so good. He's just a lovely, lovely human and sends me just wonderful people like you, Susan. Okay. So let's, let's return a bit to the book. Um, now, book one of your trilogy, and of course, this is a trilogy. You're working on the third book as we you know, do this. Book one is set mostly on Venus in the sixth dimension while right. the wanderers train for their mission, right? right. They're getting ready to come down here. In book two, they're on earth working to awaken humans to their own power. And I would definitely urge everybody listening to this to go read this book. Well, maybe start with the first, which I did not, but still they are kind of standalone. Anyway, but where are you with the final work? And final book and what's finally going to happen to earth and our humans uh each book tends to be about 40 chapters i think so i'm assuming this will be 40 chapters and i'm only on chapter six of the third book and i think it's going to be called battle for the soul of earth but i'm going to wait until unless they say something else um and so what's going to happen eventually, and I'm not sure how far in the future it will end. It could possibly end 200 years from now, um, but it will be paradise. I mean, it is going to be paradise, but there are some battles to be had. And that's what I'm writing now, the various battles and challenges that are going on on Earth. And I'm on chapter six. So in the early stages. So, but I w already was told that each of the other books took me about a year. Um, I was told this will take at least twice as long. So, so, so they, they came out in 20, the first one came out in 2019. This one, Wanderers will come out December 11th, 20, next 
in a couple of weeks um, on Amazon. And that's right. 2020. We're recording, this in New- we're recording this toward the end of November. So it's going to come out after your book drops, but that's a great uh, reason to go out and get it on Amazon because it will be out. It will be out. That's fantastic. And the third one, I don't know, maybe 2022. Mm-hmm. And so that's the whole process. Is the coronavirus in the new book? Is the tumultuous and crazy political year we've had this year in that book? Yeah. They are both in the book. Wow. Incl- and Black Lives Matter is in the book. Oh. Coronavirus is in the book. The, the battle between the dark and light politically is in the book. It's all in the book. It's all in the first six chapters. Wow. Um, so, yeah. I'm interested to see how this all ends, Susan. You probably know since you're intuitive. <laughs> I mean, you know how Earth ends. I mean, you know, are you, are you mean the story? The yeah. story. Yeah. Yeah. But that's. I'm interested too because I don't know yet. I mean, I know generally, unless they, unless they change it, and I don't know if it's my will or thy will that it be positive. If I'm bringing what an intuitive told me in 2010 that there will be paradise on Earth in two, three hundred years, or and that's why I think I'm going there, but. Maybe I'm not going there because I will ultimately write what what the council tells me because I'm the scribe and they're my council, my council. Right. What do you think their purpose is of channeling these books to you? Uh, I think they probably channeled to me in other lifetimes. The shaman said many times you've been a scribe. She said, I can see you writing with the quill like in other lifetimes. So I think they want to help humanity. I think they want to help humanity. Sure. And these books are books of love and hope. They're books of oneness. And it's like I said to you in the beginning, you know, maybe somebody could have said it in a sentence, but I'm taking three books, a trilogy, to give the same message. That the, and the message is love everybody as one because we are one. The message is oneness. We are one. We are the one. We are, and we are the one. We are God. And when you know that, you worry less. You worry less about all the rest of it. Like I worry so much less because in writing these books and channeling this information, I am happier and less neurotic as a person (laughs) sounds very therapeutic and of course you're a psychologist yeah yeah you know and I've done a lot of therapy myself for all my various you know struggles um but I am happier now at age 73 I just turned 73 in October you are kidding me no I was born in 1947 oh my goodness 1947 I'm a Libra (laughs) Um, and yep. I'm happier now than ever. Hello. <laughs> Working from home. Hashtag. And she's yeah. so happy. She's so happy. <laughs> they like it when we're around because they like our energy. They do. I used to do Reiki at home and I used to do readings at home. And the cats, the dog, they'd always come in because they yeah. just drink in yeah. whatever we're doing. They love, they, they feel it. They feel it. They do. They do. And so, you know, you bring up about being a psychologist, being a therapist, being in therapy yourself, and the whole Jungian aspect of it. I mean, Jung was very, oh my gosh, so ahead of his time. Very ahead of his time. Mystical, spiritual, divine consciousness. That's why he and Freud had to break, because Freud would not consider the collective unconscious as God and that there is no healing until each of us connects with our own divinity. That's what healing was for young. You must have, you must relate. That's why he told Bill W who wrote the big book for alcoholics. The healing is actually got, you've got to surrender to the higher power, which is you. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. So, you know, young was way ahead. I mean, 
He was a wanderer. <laughs> of course he was ahead. Why? He was a wanderer. You know, and we do have these beings every so often who come in and just kind of yeah. give us this gold. Um, and John not- Lennon, imagine, oh. imagine, mm. imagine peace on earth. Imagine we could all live as one. Imagine, that's a beautiful song, imagine. And what happened? He got a bullet in his head at age 40. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, they took him out. They took him out because he was, you know, he spoke to a lot of people and he had just read, written that beautiful album, Double Fantasy. But I think the song that said his philosophy was Imagine because that is the philosophy of the fourth dimension. So he, was, he came in to share that. I don't know about the other Beatles, maybe all of them, but definitely John Lennon. And so they killed him. So you don't think it was John Hinckley? Oh, uh, working through him. Oh, yeah. It was Whoa. he pulled the trigger. He pulled the trigger. Sure. But who knows whether he's on the dark path and he got... So he could really advance on the dark path for doing that. John Hinckley could move right up the dark path for doing that. Ooh. So whatever got in his mind about getting more power, he did get more power for that. Oh, sure. Oh, Our, yes. It will stay with him in future incarnations on the dark path. Mm, so, interesting. Yeah, because when you, you get a lot of power for taking out a light being. And, you know, John Lennon had huge struggles because it's hard to be a higher dimensional being and try to live here. You know, a lot of, I think, higher dimensional beings use drugs, they, they, they use alcohol, trying to like filter out or understand or stop the suffering. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> well, know, sometimes the, the energy and the vibration is just so much that physically it's just hard to hold yeah. on to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, oh, John God. Benjamin Franklin maybe was a wanderer, a Tesla. Oh, Tesla. Tesla. Yeah. Wanted to give electricity to everyone for free. Everyone should have this for free. This is energy. It's free for all, he said. Of course he was a wanderer. Anyone who gives that message of like, I don't want anything for myself that I also don't want for you. Mm -hmm. That's probably a wanderer. Yeah, and now we're seeing companies like Nestle wanting to take all the water bottle it sell it back to people this stuff that should be free that should be that is our birthright exactly it's exactly right water clean air clean water Mm -hmm. and then you have you know other groups like fighting for clean air and water it's the dark and the light it's the greed and the generosity it's the we're all in this together like i'm gonna get what i can for myself and my board members and my company Mm -hmm. it's a different consciousness it's the third dimensional consciousness of me and the fourth dimensional consciousness of we us us all of us interesting well and i um something that had occurred to me is that i often describe the fourth dimension as time and then the fifth dimension as to what we're moving into but it's really it's true it's all semantics yeah language It is because what we're really what we're moving into is this a higher consciousness where we all recognize that we're connected, where right. everything is is love and is pure light. Exactly. Doesn't matter what we call it, fourth or fifth. A lot of people are calling it four fifth, four dash five at the same time because of time being. And, you know, we have to agree that time is kind of spread out because our heads would explode if everything started manifesting at once, as is reality, you know, the third dimension, the fourth, they're all existing simultaneously, but we can't process that. We would just, uh, so we agree to the idea of time. Yeah. And in a way, time is kind of a human construct anyway. We, yeah. We've decided we're going to... construct. What is that? It's very third dimensional to have, to agree that there's time. Just, just to keep our heads from exploding. Because yeah. <laughs> we would manifest everything at one time. 
if we didn't agree, okay, we're going to spread time out yesterday, today, tomorrow, 200 years from now. Right. Oh, that's fascinating. Well, even doing past life regression, I mean, it's really not yeah. even past because no. we go to future. It's all happening in a, yeah. Yeah. It's all, yeah, because people are going to start to remember the future as they remember the past because it's all one. See, you can remember the future. You can see things because you can get round time, you know, like the unconscious does. There's no time in the unconscious. That's why people dream. People dream of the future. They dream of the past. They dream of other galaxies where they've lived because the unconscious is the divine and it knows everything. Wow. And that's how dreams pierce the veil of forgetting. That's why I'm a Jungian because dreams are the fastest way to help people wake up if in therapy, for people who want therapy. Dreams, so dreams are wonderful. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, I mean, the dreams, I truly believe that um, it's our body that needs rest. So it yeah. checks out. Our consciousness does not need rest. So no. it's free to wander around, free of our body. Exactly. And We're journeying all the time. And if you're far out in a dream or, you know, your body's far out, you come back, you might not remember who you are in this dimension right away. One morning about 20 years ago, I said to my then husband, when I woke up, I said, what's my name again? And he said, your name is Susan Plunkett and you're married to me, Ali Kadibi. I said, oh, 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 right. I knew that. I, I feel perfectly happy here, but I just had no idea what I was going by in this dimension. That's so funny. And, I mean, minute. yeah, I just couldn't remember, like, who I, what my name was. I you recognized were, it. You were really far out there. Yeah, I was somewhere else. I was, you know, just in one of these other dimensions. <clears throat> so I knew that I was perfectly supposed to wake up here, but I just had no idea who I was. Oh my goodness. I've had that with other people too. I'll dream, I'll have a dream about them and that will be who they are. And I cannot remember their name in this, in this reality. I have to find some way to look it up because they are so much more than that, you know, because we incarnate with our soul group again and again and again. And, you know, one time you're this person, one time you're the mother, one time you're the kid, one time you're the boyfriend, one time you're the uncle, you know, the teacher. <clears throat> we take turns so that we can all keep growing. So I, I, I was having a dream with her and I was a dawn, all day. I could not remember her name in this dimension. I had to go rifling through stuff, looking for cards and stuff to see. And then I said, oh, right, in this dimension, she's Laura. Right, but she's not. To me, she's really whatever I had dreamt of her in that dimension. So dreams are just amazing. Mm -hmm. They stay around corners into the future, you know, into other galaxies. Oh, that's amazing, amazing. And then sometimes we just kind of come skidding back because our body's starting to kind of turn over, wake up, and it's like, oh, i got to get back. And then you come slamming and you, into your And you fell. That's when people dream they're falling off a cliff. They're just coming back in. Mm-hmm. And you just kind of wake up and, oh, oh my gosh. Yeah. What's yeah. That? You just slammed in. Oh, my gosh. Well, Susan, it is so amazing talking to you because, I mean, it's like your world soul is my sister, Another soul sister. Another soul sister in New York. This Doing the podcast, I tell you, is the best. Aw. <laughs> so what else would you add? Um, anything we haven't touched on, talked about, anything you think is important that we haven't mentioned yet? I think maybe just to repeat that, don't be afraid. Your happiness is assured. Just don't be afraid to love. Just don't put your hat up on a stick and see if anybody shoots at it. Just throw your hat in the ring of love. Just decide to love because you are more loved than you will ever know. You are divine. You are part of the divine. 
and love. Never be afraid to love. That is That's what his motto is. Look at that boy. Yes. He's a good he's boy. Obi-Wan Kenobi. Oh. And he knows how to love. Because they aren't messed up by language. They don't, their frontal cortex is not developed to shut down the way our shuts down stuff. They just can feel. Well, and it's in dogs and cats and animals. They're not bound by time either. They have no concept no. of time like we do. No, they're free. They're free and therefore, in a sense, more loving. They're able to be more loving. And now he's going to chew a toy, but it's good. We're wrapping up. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. It's been a great pleasure to talk to you. Oh, too. And I wish you so much joy in your work and your journey. <laughs> Sorry about that. Zoom life. Okay. All right. I want to put in a quick plug for your book. And it, it is The Wanderers on Earth by Susan Plunkett. And it okay. is available. There it is again. And it on is Amazon. Amazon. Excellent. Um, by John. My website. And SusanPlunkett.com. SusanPlunkett.com. Excellent. Okay. Wonderful. That will be in Thank the show notes. You. Thank you, Susan, so, so, so much. Many blessings. Radiate Wellness is a community of holistic and alternative healers and consultants based in the Kansas City area dedicated to helping you create spiritual, energetic, and physical well-being. To learn more about our practitioners, services, classes, and events, or to schedule an appointment, visit us at radiatewellnesscommunity.com.